As we continue in worship, let's hear the word of God together. These words begin the second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. There's a story out of the French Revolution of a mother who wandered through the woods for three days with her two children, trying to survive on roots and leaves. On the third day of their trek, she heard some soldiers approaching and quickly hid herself and, and her children behind some bushes. The sergeant that was in charge of the patrol noticed the movement and so he prodded the bushes to see what was stirring behind them. And when he saw the starving woman and the children, he had compassion on them and immediately gave them a, a loaf of bread well, the mother took the bread eagerly, broke it into two pieces, and gave one piece to each of the two children. And the sergeant noted she's kept none for herself. A soldier asked, is it because she isn't hungry? And the sergeant answers, no, it's because she's a mother. So what can I say about moms today to all of us. There's a preacher named G. Campbell Morgan in a previous generation. He was a preacher and a Bible scholar. He had four sons and they all became ministers of the gospel. And one time they had a family reunion and a friend asked one of the sons, which Morgan is the greatest preacher. The son looked at his father and he replied, mother. Mother was the greatest preacher. And many mothers have done a lot of preaching to their children whether they considered it preaching or not. There was a mother in a local church that had a son that was quite unruly. At one time, the church had a visiting missionary there, and uh, the, the visitor was, was trying to stir up interest in people to, to, to go to a foreign uh, country and engage in mission work, preach the gospel. And the missionary noted that you know, the young boy uh, was quite a problem. And so at the end of the service, the woman was dragging the little boy behind her, and, and she told the missionary, I just feel like God is calling me to be a missionary. And the man said, he is indeed. And pointing to the little boy, he said, and there's the little heathen he wants you to preach to. <laughs> well, today, I want us to consider a mother's school of preaching. The mother's name was Eunice. She was raised in a spiritual home and was very much impacted by her mother, whose name was Lois. 
Lois, the grandmother, made it her job to train and teach her daughter the ways of God from a youth. Lois loved the scriptures, loved what we would call the Old Testament scriptures, and, and she grew to be a, a godly young woman. Eunice eventually was married to a young man who was apparently not as spiritually minded as she was. We're, we're not sure really how her mother Lois felt about this relationship. Maybe she had reservations, maybe not. Maybe in that culture she had very little to say about who her daughter married. We just don't know. But after some time, Eunice and her husband had a baby uh, who they named Timothy. Now, no doubt to them, little Timothy was a bundle of joy. Lois and, and Eunice both would tell Timothy um, the stories of the scriptures. Both would pray for him and would train him carefully um, from birth in the spiritual truths of God. One time much later, there was a preacher, a traveling missionary that came to town. His name was Paul. His message was all about Jesus, the Messiah. Both Lois and Eunice listened intently as Paul preached about how Jesus was the fulfillment of all the promises of the Old Testament. And, and he encouraged everyone who listened to hear to the message to, to put their trust and obedience not in the old law but in Jesus. So with Timothy being taught by his mother and grandmother and, and now getting the message that the Apostle Paul was sharing, Timothy had a good, strong understanding of who Jesus was and soon he too obeyed the Lord. Now, Paul grew to love Timothy, along with Timothy's grandmother and mother. And Paul spent further time uh, training and molding Timothy and encouraging him, along with people like Eunice and Lois. Timothy was just a very young man, uh, but he grew under all this good teaching, and, and he begins to work with Paul. Uh, preaching and, and teaching the gospel to people who had never heard it before. Many years later, Paul would end up in prison and was going to be killed uh, for preaching Jesus. And during this time, Paul writes two letters to the younger Timothy. In these books, we have Paul instructing his young charge on how to be a great preacher in Ephesus, which was where he was located, the city he called home. As Paul writes 1 and 2 Timothy, what we call 1 and 2 Timothy, to this young man, among other things, Paul reflects on how it all began with his godly mother, Eunice, and his godly grandmother, Lois. And that's the passage that we read as we began a moment ago. So this mother's school of preaching, I'm calling it, was established by both a grandmother and a mother. 2 Timothy 1 verse 5 again, Paul said, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. What made these people so special? Now, Timothy was one of Paul's favorite people, obviously. In another place in the New Testament, he says of Timothy, there is no one else like him. I have no one else like Timothy. Why was he special? Well, a big part of the reason 
he was special was because Lois was special and Eunice was special. They all shared a special kind of faith. First, it was Lois who passed it on to Eunice and that team of grandmother and mother passed it on to Timothy. Special faith. Why was it special? Because it was genuine. It was real. Paul calls it here sincere. The word in the original is unhypocritical. There was no hypocrisy in this grandmother, and so there was no hypocrisy in this mother, and so there was nothing fake in this son, Timothy. Real stuff, genuine faith. That's what this mother's school of preaching produced. And I'll tell you, you could not get anything more important than that at any other school you could attend. It's the most important thing they could give him. If you can develop real, sincere faith in Christ, you have the most important thing by far that you can achieve. It's been said that if your Christianity doesn't work at home, it just doesn't work at all. And that's true. You know, no one knows better than a child whether a parent's faith is genuine. They have perfectly functioning fakeness detectors. They know what's real and what's not. If you want to instill authentic faith in your children, then you must take your own faith seriously. So that's probably the most important thing that Timothy learned in his mother's school of preaching. Sincere, genuine, real, unhypocritical faith. And... One of the ways that these ladies instilled a sincere faith in Timothy is, is revealed to us over in chapter 3 of this letter. Chapter 3, verse 14, Paul writes this. He says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood. Note those words. From childhood, you've been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. This mother and this grandmother taught Timothy the word of God, didn't they? Um, they instilled it in him. They helped to write it, inscribe it on his heart as it had been written on theirs. And so you can imagine the kind of things that they taught. They, they, they told him the stories of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah and the flood, Father Abraham, stories of Moses, both the deliverer and the lawgiver, David and the prophets. These things they instilled in Timothy. And you think about how important the word of God was to Timothy and to Paul. Um, I want you to hear some other verses in this letter. Chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Then in chapter 2, verse 15, same letter. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. 
a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Those are pretty well-known, famous verses of Scripture from Paul's pen, and, and for good reason. They're powerful, but I, I'm telling you this morning that the truths proclaimed in those verses had already been instilled in Timothy. at home in his mother's school of preaching. Those weren't the first times he thought those thoughts when he read Paul's written words. They had been written in his heart already. You want to develop sincere faith in children? It starts at home. It starts with a reverence for God and his word. And Timothy was blessed to find that in these two women in his home from childhood. And one more thing that young Timothy learned from these wonderful mothers that he was blessed with was perseverance. You don't teach a sincere, unhypocritical faith without teaching endurance and perseverance. You don't teach a young person the word of God without those traits. You see, it, it takes time to teach and learn the word of God. It takes dedication, day in, day out effort. And so throughout this letter, Paul keeps reaffirming these lessons and calling on Timothy to live out what he's been taught his entire life. The fourth chapter is the last chapter. It may well be the very last thing that Paul ever wrote. So what does he, what does he say in his last words, verse 1? He says, I charge you in the presence of of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. A shortened version it's not always going to be easy, Timothy. It's not always going to be easy. You think that's the first time that Timothy ever heard that? Doubtful. Highly doubtful. He heard it from Lois, and he had heard it from Eunice. He saw them. Live it out. He saw them endure. He learned how to do so himself in his mother's school of preaching. Well, I attended a mother's school of preaching too. I've been so blessed and I'm so thankful with the opportunities God has given me through the years to learn. to sit at the feet of some of the great preachers and teachers of our great brotherhood and to go to wonderful colleges and, and universities and to attend uh, seminars and lectureships that enriched me. But I first learned what faith was at home from Millie Mason. And I learned to love the Bible at home from my parents. I 
so easily recall seeing them like on a Saturday night uh, preparing their Bible lesson to teach the next day they both taught in church getting ready never imagined that one day I would do the same thing but I saw them doing it from a young age from childhood and making sure we were ready to get up the next day and go and be with God's people and learn the word of God and worship. From childhood, that was inscribed in me. I learned to love the Bible at home. And I learned persistence and endurance and stick to itiveness. I saw all those things on display in my own mother's school of preaching. So, faithful mothers, God bless you today. God bless you, faithful grandmothers who are helping. You have no idea the good you are doing for the cause of Christ. Let's pray together. God, you are so good. We thank you for bringing us into your family. Help us to be faithful members of that family, to love one another, to grow together in faith and in your word. We thank you today. This, uh, this is your day, but it's also a day where our world says thank you to mothers, and, and we are so thankful for good mothers and grandmothers. Please bless them. Help them know they're loved and appreciated. Help us to learn lessons, even if we're not a mother or a grandmother, lessons from them in faith that will help us be more like your son. Thank you for hearing us today. Help us to live for you this week. We pray in Christ. Amen. I thank you for listening this morning. Before we go, we offer you a time if you need to come and ask for prayers or, or help or, or maybe today, um, like Lois and Eunice and Timothy, centuries ago to obey the gospel of Christ and to prepare for eternity. If we can help you with any of those things, won't you come? Let us know what as we stand in